everybody welcome back to my channel where it is my hope to inspire you to capture the vision of your life if you are new here hi welcome please remember to subscribe and to click that gray bell to be notified the moment i upload another video every wednesday and on the weekends on all things adhd and whatever i feel like talking about today i'm going to be sharing with you my experience on how I came to realize that I have ADHD, primarily inattentive type ADHD. So it's gonna be a little bit of a story time, so go ahead and get your coffee and your drink and your pet and whoever else you want to enjoy this video and let's let's get to crack a lacking and to talk a lockin. So let's take it back to when I was a kid. I was born in St. Louis, Missouri, but as a child, as a baby, we moved out to Los Angeles, California as a family. And I lived there for my whole elementary school years and career. When I was a kid, I think it's normal to want to be a bunch of things when you grow up. Like I wanted to be a gymnast. I wanted to be an ice skater. I wanted to be an archeologist so I can like dust around little skeletons and like explore and like just very Indiana Jones inspired things and you know I love the idea of like discovering bones like in Jurassic Park in the beginning of the first Jurassic Park all that kind of stuff and the household I was living in as a kid there was a bunch of us I have three siblings including obviously me so there was four of us kids we were always playing definitely had a messy room my parents you know they gave us some attention but we were kind of able to do whatever we wanted so there wasn't a lot of focus and I don't feel like anything was noticed from my parents and towards me on like, hmm, there's something up with that, with that kid of ours, let's look into this. So, I mean, and girls for the most part, if you don't realize, are oftentimes not diagnosed and never really, it's never really noticed because girls are primarily usually the inattentive type, which is definitely looking back, I agree with. Because as a kid going to elementary school, I feel like I was always aloof. I feel like I was always like off in the midst of day, but I was able to focus at certain times. I don't know if it was because I was interested in certain subjects, but I learned how to read in a timely fashion. I did always, 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 always struggle with spelling. That was always a struggle. I was good at math and I vividly remember I was good at math up into the third grade. And once we started learning long division, I really, really struggled with math from fourth grade on, especially again with long division. Like I remember being very angry and very anxiety ridden at like why I couldn't get it. And I felt like they were moving ahead too fast and kids would just like raise their hand to solve the equation and go to the chalkboard, chalkboard, remember those? And they would do the equation and they would just turn around and they would know the answer. And I was not understanding why I couldn't understand it. And I knew I wasn't a, a bad kid or it just made me feel like what's wrong with me, you know? And so, then then on i just struggled with math so basically i was a decent student average nothing to really worry about going into element going into middle school we eventually moved back to the midwest i wound up in st louis and the school districts that the public school districts in la were not great and the ones that i went to in st louis were amazing so i really had a lot to catch up on and I was blown away at the technology and I was blown away at what they expected us of us and I didn't know what an IM name was or an email was or how to type. I had never really had to type and I was just really, really behind. So that was kind of why I thought that maybe I was struggling with school or that was the excuse that, and it wasn't even just an excuse, it was true there was a lot for me to catch up on. But by the time I was done with middle school, I just had very aloof thinking in middle school. I do remember I'm all over the map right now. I'm trying to reflect back on middle school. I remember in sixth grade, I had to get pulled out into the hallway because my reading was behind, which I thought it was good. I thought I was a decent reader because I was in a reading group in third grade, even though in third grade, I would not really read. I would just get distracted staring at this one girl that was a really fast reader. And I was like, dang, she reads fast. And I wasn't even reading. So I was looking like I was able to blend in and I looked like I was like a decent student, but I, I wasn't even doing some of the material. <laughs> I wasn't even reading like I was supposed to be reading. Um, so again, fast forward to sixth grade, I was pulled out into the hallway into a special reading group to catch up. And I remember reading, I know what you did last summer. Why were we reading a horror story book in middle school? I remember liking it. So, and I loved going out in the hallway. I did not even feel, you know, sad about it. I loved it. So my weird thinking was when I was in sixth grade, my older sister was in eighth grade and she was going into high school. And I remember in sixth grade just being like, oh, next year when I'm in high school with my sister, it's like, what? No, like I just had those dumb glitches in my mind's matrix where I just didn't make sense looking back. Like things just didn't add up. And I just had very, 
aloof, quixotic, lackadaisical thinking and like daydreamy kind of thinking. And it's like, no, you, you're going to seventh grade, honey. And like, it's embarrassing for me to even say this, but that's like where my mind was. It wasn't, it wasn't in the present. And it, it took me a while to process that and be like, oh my God, I have two more years of this. And so then by the time I was in eighth grade, going into ninth grade, um, I never was taught to project into what kind of college you want to go to. College was never spoken about. So even in high school, I wound up being like, wait, there's more, there's college. Like I just was really slow on the uptake. I don't know if it was my leaders and the people that should be guiding me or what, but I just was very oblivious to some of the things that I feel like everybody knew about, but me, I felt like I was always finding things out in hindsight and I wish I would have known ahead of time. So in high school, freshman year, some of you might know this story from if you followed all of my videos, but freshman year I had a 1.6 GPA, really was struggling in school and something in me knew I wasn't dumb. Like I just knew I wasn't stupid even though I was struggling in school. And I just remember that middle of that year, I just prayed and then I also started focusing. I prayed to God and asked him to help me with my grades and then I started applying myself and I used the little calendar planner book they gave us, started writing my homework down and I brought my GPA up from a 1.6 to 3.6, yay! With that in, in mind, or with that said, I was really struggling with math still, so they brought me back to pre-algebra from algebra because I was falling asleep in classes. Like, I guess my brain was so bored in my prefrontal cortex, like I couldn't help it. I was falling asleep while taking notes. Like, also another thing along the history of my life was my sleep issues. It was a major tall tale sign looking back uh, it started in the latter years of my elementary, I would oversleep and I feel like that's not normal for kids, maybe in high school, but you know, when you're 10 or below, like I just remember always being the last one to kind of wake up um, and my siblings would already be awake. Um, but anyways, in middle school and in high school, I would always be really tired and lethar lethargic. And I know that obviously I was probably eating a lot of sugar, which isn't good looking back in hindsight for anybody, but especially somebody with an ADHD brain. Again, in ninth grade, I brought my, my grades up. So it wasn't easy peasy going forward. Classes got really hard junior year and my grades dipped a bit into 2.8 zone. But for the most part, I had decent grades going into college, but that's the thing. I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. I always wanted to be an actress growing up and I just was like, that's what I'm gonna be. So I just kind of dismissed college. I didn't really think of a plan B. I tried to go to college right after high school, but I could never make my classes and I didn't know what classes to sign up for. So I tried to go twice in the two years after high school, in the two years following high school. I think I think I was 21 by the time I tried to stop. I stopped trying to go because I kept messing up. I kept not knowing what, what general transfers to do, what studies to take, what classes to take, and I had no self-motivation. At this point, I pretty much had been working in the service industry as a server, um, starting off as a hostess, then to a busboy or a, wow, busboy, um, a service assistant or a busser, and then eventually I became a server, and I've been working as a server in the service industry at restaurants ever since then, still to this day. I'm a server right now, actually. I think I was 22 when I realized, I think there was a subconscious part of me that was like not really fully focused on college because I kept being like, well, I'm gonna be an actress. So my life, you know, came to a close in St. Louis, moved out to California, and my legacy of my 20s being basically a hot mess continued. I used to beat myself up for it, not knowing that it was definitely my ADHD trying to rear its ugly head, but I moved out to California to pursue my career in acting, feeling like this was going to be my big way to, to prove to myself that the reason why my life previously wasn't a success was because acting was what I wanted to do. And it was a driving passion of mine, but I was never successful at it because I was so distracted all the time. I could never focus on the material I had in terms of my auditions. I could never focus on the path you need to take to become an actress, to get into the right classes, to sign up for the right workshops, to sign up for the right, you know, headshot session lessons and things like that. First of all, I would either be late, not make it, not really put a lot of effort into it, and just pretty much quit. I quit some of these things. I got SAG eligible, which was, that was a miracle in and of itself. But even though I was SAG eligible, I pretty much just lost interest in it. And it just became another career that I once wanted to do and I realized I didn't really like it. I hated auditioning more than anything. I hated preparing for something that wasn't gonna be, you know, a done deal. I didn't like auditioning for acting. I had gotten some good parts in St. Louis before I moved out to LA, which proved to me like it's worth it to move out there. But once I was there, it was just, 
an uphill battle. The last thing I ever tried to do was take a stand-up comedy class, which some of you might have seen from my previous videos, and that was when my nickname, Ardellavision, was formed, and um, I never finished the showcase. And so another quit on my roster of fails. Quitting, not showing up, running late. Quitting, not showing up, running late. Failing, dropping out, disappointing people, having embarrassing, shameful moments of having to explain myself, just all that all throughout my 20s. So after a lot of failures in California, I decided I wanted to move back to my home state of Missouri, to St. Louis, to try to just go back to school. I had a good job at a good company and I'd be able to live on my own. And I moved back to St. Louis. And looking back on my life, I was just like, wow, I've moved over 30 times. I've had over 30 jobs. I still don't know what I wanna be when I grow up, but I'm gonna go to school. But I still couldn't figure it out. And I quit again. And I was like, what is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? I was like, is it PTSD? Is it depression? I thought I was depressed in the past. Do I still have depression and I don't realize it? Do I have borderline personality disorder? I thought maybe I had bipolar disorder. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me because I knew there was nothing wrong with me, but I knew there was something wrong with me, which is very, I know that makes no sense. But I'm like, I know that I'm a fully functioning, decently, functioning human being, but there is something that I'm up against. I know that I struggle to fall asleep. I know that I struggle to wake up. I know that I struggle to stay focused on a linear path for myself. I know I struggle to manage so many things. I know I get overwhelmed at paperwork. I know I get anxiety. I know I get anxious. I know I, I forget thoughts and I forget things and I fumble over my words and I'm not as articulate and precise as some people are with their lives and with the way they function and communicate and do things. Why can't I manage 24 hours in a day? Then my older sister, God bless her, gave me the gift of knowledge of saying, I think you might have ADHD. That was never, ever, ever something I had considered I had. And I had looked into a lot of mental disorders and I thought I knew all the options. And when she said that, I was like, oh, and she's like, I think I have it potentially. And I was like, oh really? And I think because it came from her as a source, I like actually thought further into it. And I didn't realize that there was anything beyond the stereotype of the hyperactive type ADHD that you find in little boys when they're over hyper. Cause really hyper kids kind of, they, they would shock me as a little girl. And growing up, I just, the hyper, it wasn't even just boys. I remember certain people in my middle school that were really hyper girls, like friends that I just couldn't quite handle. And so that was my idea of ADHD because a lot of them, I always would find out they have ADHD. So there's another type? Like, gosh, where has this been my whole life? That was when I realized going home and looking into the subtype of ADHD, inattentive type, I literally, I could cry about it right now and I am. I literally cried. I did not even need to get a diagnosis. Diagnosis, schmiagnosis. Like I just was like, oh my gosh, this is it. This is me. Like guessing game is over, this is me. Everything I read down to a T was me. But seriously, like all of the struggles with sleep, which I had been shamed about my sleep issues, which that used to be a criteria for ADHD. Like, are you kidding me? Things that weren't even on the criteria list that I was reading into. Like when I read that sometimes people equate it, have these moments of not feeling alive, which I had said that in the past, I was like, oh my gosh, Becky, look at her. But okay, wow, I'm veering off and I'm getting distracted and cutting people off. But seriously, all the things, all the things, cutting people off, getting distracted, cutting people off in the middle of a conversation because you got distracted, losing friends, struggling with social connections, feeling anxious, st struggling to stay focused, quitting things, not being able to easily follow directions, just everything, the sleep issue thing, the, the down to the silliest symptoms that I read into, like liking a lot of salt, just everything about it. I, re I vividly remember crying. I just was like, oh my gosh, I've finally found the gold mine of an answer of why I function the way I function. So my goal going forward has always been to figure this thing out so I could figure myself out, so I could give myself grace. I cried because I finally was like, oh my gosh, you're not lazy. You're not stupid. You're not an idiot. This is why you can't get certain things figured out. This is why you don't have your act together, no pun intended. 
It was the biggest sigh of relief of having a name to what I was up against, having a name to why I functioned the way I function, because we're out here trying to function. This video is not about getting diagnosed. This video is about what made me realize that I had it. And then eventually the diagnosis came after, the diagnosis came after, but yeah, that was my take and that's my story and that's my experience on everything leading up into the moment that I realized, oh my gosh, I have this thing. This is the thing that I have. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. Please remember to give this video one big thumbs up. It really helps me out a lot. Don't forget to subscribe. It is a free subscription. You don't have to pay anything and it helps me out as well. If you wanna be notified the moment I upload a new video, remember to click that gray bell. I upload new videos every Wednesday and on the weekends on all things ADHD and whatever I feel like talking about. And you all must know by now that you are all in my prayers and I really hope you have a good rest of your week. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.